Hello, I have an upcoming project where I need to install a solenoid, so I thought I would take a few minutes to talk about different types of automotive solenoids. You could also call these relays. Uh, I actually like the term relay a little bit better because these are just larger equivalents of smaller relays that you find in all kinds of equipment, automotive, computers, electronics, and whatnot. But anyways, I wanted to talk about these solenoids because there are different types and it's hard to tell what they are just by looking at them from the outside. There are two main types of solenoids you'll encounter in automotive use. There are starter solenoids and there are uh, what I'll call ungrounded solenoids and I'll explain what I mean in a little bit. Starter solenoids are just that. They're used to engage the starting motor in a car or a truck when you hit the key or the start button. Ungrounded solenoids are much more widely used in heavy equipment for shutting off battery power to equipment or in snow plows for powering the plow motor or in diesel trucks for uh, glow plug circuits. They have a, a wide variety of uses. This is a basic starter solenoid here and this is an ungrounded solenoid but I've seen ungrounded solenoids that also look like starter solenoids. So that's why I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about what's different inside. So first of all, I made a little list here of the basic types of solenoids. We've got the starter solenoids, which are internally grounded. And again, I'll explain that in a minute. And there's a special type of starter solenoid that has an extra terminal for the ignition circuit in older cars that have points. There are the ungrounded solenoids, like I just mentioned. They're pretty rare, but there are also some that are internally powered. Those are common for snow plows, or, well, I shouldn't say they're common because they're rare, but they're used in snow plows. And there are other specialty types like latching solenoids, double pole solenoids that are beyond the scope of this video. So first I'll talk about starter solenoids. If you look at the diagram on the left, this is a diagram of what's happening inside of a solenoid like this. These terminals, one and three, are the larger terminals, the larger studs on this solenoid. Terminal two is one of these little guys here. Now for the moment, ignore the other terminal. This is actually a special type for cars with points. Inside of this solenoid, you've got a coil of wire. That's what's in the cylindrical part of the solenoid. It is connected to ground, which on this is this mounting plate right here. When you pass electrical current from the start terminal through the solenoid and it grounds through the mounting plate, you energize this solenoid. Once you energize it, contact is made between the two large studs, which are one and three in this diagram. So if you see this big T in the middle, imagine that T jumping upward when you apply power to terminal 2 through the coil and through ground. When that is momentarily applied, you complete a circuit through 1 and 3 and that sends power to the car's starter. Now I mentioned this is a special type for cars with points. You can see that in this diagram here. I changed the numbers a little bit, but you still have the same coil that's internally grounded and you still have these two main studs, which on this diagram are one and four. But you have a third terminal, or a fourth terminal, if you will, that is the same as terminals one and four, but it goes to this little guy, well, one of these two. We'll see which one in a minute when we measure this. And that serves to apply full battery voltage to the point system in an older car's ignition system. Quite often, older cars will have a ballast resistor so that when the car is running, the coil doesn't get full battery voltage. But when you're starting the engine, you're dragging the battery down with the starting motor, so you want to bypass the ballast resistor and send as much voltage as possible to the coil to help the car start. So when this starter with the ignition terminal for point systems is energized, you have the same coil, this T jumps up, and it makes contact between one three, and four all at once. When this is not energized, there is no connection between 
one, three, and four. They're all just floating right here, just like you see in this diagram. They're not connected to anything. Only when this is energized are all three of those connected. Now, polarity does not really seem to matter, at least on the solenoids that I've worked on. That may not always be the case, I can't say for sure, but in the ones that I've worked on, it doesn't matter if you hook the battery up to one and the starter up to four, or the battery up to four and the starter to one. It doesn't seem to matter. Now, terminal three is a much smaller pin, a much smaller terminal, so you couldn't connect that to battery or starter. That has to be the ignition terminal. And same with the coil. It doesn't matter if the car is positive ground or negative ground, at least on the solenoids that I have worked on. That may not always be the case. Here's an example of a starter solenoid on a vehicle. This is a 1939 Ford. It's a six volt system, positive ground, and this has a three terminal solenoid. So you can see this big cable comes from the battery, goes to one of the posts. The other stud has a cable that goes down to the starter, and this little wire right here goes to the start button. So when the start button is pressed, 12 or 6 volts is sent to, through this wire, through the solenoid, and to ground, activating it, which powers the starter. So that's, we looked at the, at the first primary type, which is a starter terminal, and looked at a subtype, which is starter with ignition terminal. I also mentioned ungrounded ones, like this. And again, just to mention, sometimes these look like this. Ungrounded solenoids are like the one on the right. You still have your primary studs, one and four, and in this case, they're right here on the top of the solenoid. And then the coil is connected right across the two smaller terminals down here. There is no internal connection from the coil to the mounting plate or ground or the big terminals. This is the most versatile type of solenoid because you can power this or ground this however you need to for the application at hand. But it works the same way. You have to pass current through this coil and when you do, it causes this contact to connect terminals 1 and 4, just like that. This is common in snow plows where you might have uh, power going to one of these terminals, and then you ground this through the control handle in the cab of the vehicle. Or in a diesel truck, which is what I'm going to be using this in, the diesel truck that I'm working on has a special glow plug control circuit, and so current passes through this coil through a little computer module. And when it's energized, it sends power through these terminals to the glow plug system. Or sometimes you see these in golf carts. So you have an on-off switch on the golf cart which sends power through the coil and then terminals one and four go to the main electric motor in the golf cart. Here's an example of an ungrounded solenoid in a diesel truck. This is in the glow plug circuit and this is that same solenoid. You can see that there. I realize it's kind of hard to see where it's positioned back on the firewall with all the wires in front of it. But the two big wires in front Actually, with this one, they're up and down like this. Those two big wires in front, one goes to the glow plugs and one goes to battery. And then behind it, you can just barely see a green wire and looks like maybe a pink or an orange wire. That goes to these two smaller terminals, and those two wires go to the glow plug control circuit. So just to recap, we looked at starter solenoids, starters with ignition terminals, ungrounded ones, and then I'll talk about internally powered solenoids. I've only ever seen these once, and I'll show you on a vehicle where this is used. It's used on a snowplow. Here is that internally powered solenoid. So you're looking under the hood of an old Chevy Blazer, and this has a conventional western plow with the T-handle. This solenoid right here is an internally powered solenoid. The black cable on the left goes right to the battery and the red cable on the right goes off to the plow hydraulic motor. That green, little green wire right there goes to the small stud, goes to the plow's control handle. And there's power, there's 12 volts on that terminal all the time. When the handle activates the solenoid, it applies a ground to complete the circuit. If this solenoid failed, 
I would replace it with a four terminal ungrounded solenoid and just apply battery power to one of the ungrounded terminals. Looking at the diagram, internally powered solenoid has one terminal on the outside that goes to the coil and the other side of the coil goes to the battery terminal. This is the only type where it matters which terminal has battery voltage. In this case, you have to connect the battery to terminal 1. And then terminal 3 goes off to the snowplow motor, the hydraulic pump motor. <clears throat> so power is at 1, goes through the coil, and there's power right here at terminal 2 all the time. To activate this, you apply a ground to terminal 2. In a snowplow, that's done through the control handle. So when you move the control handle to a raise position or to a turn position, it grounds pin 2, activating the solenoid and sending power to the plow's hydraulic pump. Now just because a solenoid is a starter solenoid or an ungrounded solenoid doesn't mean that they are interchangeable because there are still other variations in the different types of solenoids. You've got the current rating of the main contacts, that is how much current in amperage can safely flow through the main terminals of the solenoid. A starter might draw two or three hundred amps, so the solenoid has to be able to safely handle that 200 amp surge for the few seconds it takes to operate the starter. A glow plug circuit might take, let's say, 30 or 40 amps, or a snow plow might take 200 or better, just like a starter. Maybe a golf cart could take 50 to 100, depending on how much load is on it. So the solenoid has to carry the amount of current necessary for the circuit that it's controlling. The next thing is whether the solenoid can be continuously turned on or not. Now starter solenoids are always intermittent duty because it's only active for the few seconds it takes to start the engine. You, wouldn't, you would never turn this on and leave it on all the time because that would cause the starter to be engaged continuously. But that's not always the case. Going back to my example of a golf cart, that golf cart solenoid is turned on the entire time the golf cart is being used. So those solenoids have to be rated for continuous duty. Other uses, like a glow plug circuit or a snow plow, would be intermittent duty because the glow plugs are not energized all the time. And same with the snow plow. That motor is only energized when you're trying to raise or turn the blade. The other thing is the coil resistance is different for different designs, and that is the resistance of this coil right here. If that resistance is too low, it'll cause too much current to be drawn through the control circuit. So you just have to make sure that it's matched for the application. The other thing is what voltage the coil expects. Is it a 6-volt car or a 12-volt car? And lastly, there's other mechanical differences, like the difference in shape, the size of the stud, the mounting plate, whether it's a plastic body or a metal body, whether the mounting plate is on top or on bottom. I've seen them either way. So I just wanted to cover the different types from a theoretical standpoint so you have a basic understanding of what's going on inside of them. So now let's say that you have a selection of these solenoids and you want to know what type your solenoids are. First is to figure out whether they are three terminal or four terminal. If they are three terminal, then looking at our diagram, it must either be a plain starter solenoid or an internally powered solenoid. And because these are so rare, most likely any three terminal solenoid you find will be a starter solenoid. If it's a four terminal, it could be an ungrounded solenoid or it could be a starter solenoid with the extra ignition terminal. And I'll show you how to tell the difference because I have an example of each one right here. So using a multimeter set to the resistance scale, I guess that shows up on camera. If I take a look at an ungrounded solenoid, we have the resistance of the coil across these two terminals. And we can measure that resistance with our multimeter. This one has about 7 ohms of coil resistance. Now that could vary quite a bit. That could be as low as 2 or 3 ohms, or it could be as high as 40 or 50 ohms. But you can see right there that because we have a connection between these two smaller terminals, 
that this is an ungrounded solenoid because we're seeing the coil resistance. And if you want to double check, there will be no connection between these top two studs when it's not energized, and there will be no connection between any of these other terminals like this. OL means no connection. Now let's take a look at this solenoid here. This is a starter solenoid with an ignition terminal. And we can figure out which terminal is which, too, using the same method. So in this case, we'll do the first test, which is to check for resistance across these two smaller terminals. So if we check across these two small terminals, we still have no connection. So we know right away this is not an ungrounded solenoid. It must be a starter solenoid. If we go between one of these terminals and ground, we will find the coil resistance. So I'll go between this one and ground. Now we have a connection. This is a little bit rusty. Let me see if I can get a good connection. Now it's hard to see on camera, but there's actually a little M right here for mega ohms. Let's go to the other terminal and see if we have a, a better connection. Here we go. Okay, this is actually the starter terminal. We have 4.3 ohms of resistance between this terminal and ground. So right away we know this is a starter solenoid, and if you had just a plain three terminal solenoid, you would not have this terminal. So this would be blank right here. With this, if you applied power here, between here and ground, you would activate the solenoid. Because, looking at the meter again, we still have, if I get a good connection, well, let's say, there we go, about 4 to 5 ohms of resistance. Now, what I was seeing here really is not a connection. We were just seeing mega ohms of resistance, which could have just been my fingers across the terminals. So, you have to know your meter and just know how to read it, because there's a little bit of resistance just through my fingers, but that M right there is mega ohms which for our purposes here is no connection. So this terminal has no connection between this or ground or either of these main lugs. There's no connection until this solenoid is activated. So that is the ignition terminal. Hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down in the comments and I will do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.